This is Open to Hope Radio, featuring Dr. Gloria Horsley and her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley, coming to you on behalf of the Open to Hope Foundation, dedicated to those who are looking for hope after loss. Now, here's Dr. Gloria. Welcome to the Grief Relief Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my co-host and daughter. Dr. Hi. We got a great guest today and a topic that you and I are very interested in, and that's on spiritual dimensions of loss and on uh, kind of the professional community and, and how the community deals with it. Our guest is going to be a psychologist, and his name is Dr. George Harold Jennings. And Dr. George Harold has experienced numerous spiritual events throughout his life. Uh, most recently in reliving the physical death of his sister, and through this experience connecting spiritually with his mother. As a psychologist, George believes the mainstream members of his discipline should be more readily open to exploring the spiritual dimensions of being human. He is the author of Passages Beyond the Gate, and he is also a professor of clinical psychology at Drew University, and he works in their counseling center as well. Welcome to the show, George Harold. Well, thank you very much. I'm very honored to uh, be a part of the show. You know, psychology has been described as a loose federation of subdisciplines um, in some circles. And um, different things are going on in psychology, even though in many ways um, they are related, or at least we would like to think they are related and can, uh, will be related in the future. But with some aspects of psychology moving in the direction of, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, quantification is important, so you have to be able to show, as you said, evidence-based um, uh, situations over and over and over again. Uh, some things are very difficult to provide that kind of evidence for. Uh, um, for example, you know, we can't really measure consciousness. We don't even know what consciousness is we we are struggling with this uh, across different disciplines, but yet consciousness may, as some have argued, is the bottom line. It's the ground of being of all being. It's the, it's what creates reality, um, and psychology has to deal with consciousness. So things that go on in psychology um, are such that. Uh, Psychology can declare itself as a science, but it's also a discipline that uh, has philosophical components to it, um, and in some cases even metaphysical components to it. I guess the first thing I would want to say, I want to say is um, there are various models, and when a practitioner operates within that model, it's the way he or she was taught. They think it's correct. They think to work outside of it would be a you know problematic. Um, and so there is this medical model, and, um, you know, if you're following that model and you believe that um, various um, problems that can occur uh, in, in the life of a person are brain-related, brain anomalies, you know, some kind of biochemical imbalance, and here you have tools that can address that, then why not use them? And if there's um, some indication that they work, then why do anything else? So, um, I, you know, in some ways I'm saying that I believe that people who follow uh, such a model as, a, as the medical model, I do think they're trying to do good work. But they weren't taught about other ways of working with the person. And these other ways can be effective. Um, and like you said, you, you know, someone may tell you they see um, uh, a deceased loved one, whatever, well, from the medical model, well, how can they handle that? That must be some kind of hallucination or something going on in the brain. Um, so they, they dismiss it, whereas other people embrace other models, particularly the transpersonal model, they would be more open to the to possibilities that um, not only might that be real, even though we can't necessarily prove it, uh, they're also interested in the impact it would have on the person. Right. Heidi, do you want to log in on this, too? Um, I guess I'm just I'm thinking about, if I was a student and I came to you and said, okay, I want to learn how to work with people that have had a loss. That's what I'm going to go into. How would, how would you recommend that I 
best help somebody that just had the death of a child or a sister, et cetera? I will, you know, first of all, you want to give people the opportunity to talk about what, what they are feeling, what are they going through, um, what is the impact it has on their life. Um, and that could, you know, if you have any number, if you're talking to a student or if you're doing this in a, in a session, uh, that can be a, a lengthy conversation, but it can also be a very helpful and healing one. Uh, of course, if you're in a session, you would want to also be aware of what's associated with those thoughts and feelings. Are they anxious? Are they overly anxious? Are they depressed? But if they're just curious, if they just want to know, um, then I want to talk to them. I want to get a sense of, um, you know, how impactful the experience is on their life. I wondered if you could talk about your own experiences with the physical death of your sister and connecting spiritually with your mother. Can you tell us about that? Sure. You know, uh, uh, my sister had, um, I would like to say, crossed, crossed over um, a few days earlier. Um, and I, it was very early in the morning, I had this overwhelming sense of anxiety. And I'm not the type of person who normally experience uh very strong anxiety. I've had my moments like other people, but this was so overwhelming. It was like, what's going on? And I remember saying that to myself, but I also realized I was not fully awake, and yet I wasn't sleeping. And so it was, you know, I now would say, an altered state of consciousness. Uh, things are very clear, um, as if I were awake, but I knew I wasn't. Um, and then I had the sense of being uh, a spectator of an event that was unfolding before me. And what unfolded was an, um, my being able to see my sister. Um, and in, that ex in the midst of that experience, I realized that it was not my anxiety that I was experiencing. It was my sister's anxiety. And somehow I had, you know, I, I've, I've long felt that I had empathic abilities, um, but this, this was such that I um, was, was even surprised that it was happening in the moment because I really felt it. Um, it turned out my sister did cross over as a result of a heart attack. No one expected it was one truly a sudden heart attack. It so shocked everyone. So um, I'm still in the midst of this experience, and um, I realized that my sister was very anxious. She, and I also saw that she was in, a, in darkness, and she was very worried, nervous, you know, there was a sense. What's going? What's, what's going on here? And I'm I'm witnessing this. I'm experiencing this. Very. It was very very lucid. Very clear. And then um, I turned my head from left to right. She was on the left side of the visual field. I turned to the to the right, and I saw. I couldn't make them out as individuals, but I knew there were people there. And like a group of people, and it was they, they were illuminated, not to the point that you could see the details of who they were or what they were wearing or anything like that, but, but you, I knew they were people. And I heard one of them call my sister by a name that very few people um, would call her by. Mm -hmm. Her name, we called her Shirley. But she was actually born Shirley May. Ah. Um, and I remember my mom would call her Shirley May from time to time, and occasionally my dad. Well, someone said Shirley May to grab her attention, and she reacted to that. It, it settled her. I felt the anxiety begin to diminish in myself, which mm -hmm. I believe was happening to her. And she started to move towards that light, um, a, group, a group of illuminated people. And, you know, 
my background is is Christian. However, I do uh, I'm very open to the truth of various religions. So, uh, and I had read various religious works um, over the years, but my but my sister was Christian, and through her eyes, I believe, I began to focus on the crowd, and she felt one of the images was Christ. Mm -hmm. And she moved towards that light, and as she got closer and closer, the the anxiety just totally diminished and went away. And next thing you know, I shifted my consciousness from whatever that state was to the everyday. I, I woke up. My eyes opened. Right. And I just sat there, and I said, wow. Wow, that was something. I was eager to share it with my family members because I I felt it would be a healing experience for them, especially my sister's Uh, daughter and her son. For me, my view of people crossing over was is such that um, you know if I go to a funeral, etc., I will end up crying because of what I pick up other people are feeling. My own belief is that there's life after life, passages beyond the gate. Basically, it's about um, those theories that we uh, don't pay a lot of attention to, that we are in denial about, we just don't think are meaningful, that I believe are meaningful because they would help us complete our understanding of what it means to be human when we integrate those theories with what we already know. Well, George Harold, thank you so much for being on the show today and uh, a very, very interesting topic. Well, thank you. It was a joy to be on the show. Thanks for listening to the show today. God bless. You've been listening to Open to Hope Radio, hosted by Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley. Like today's edition, all of our past programs are available on demand at opentohope.com along with helpful articles, videos, resources, and links to help get you through the toughest time of your life. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Again, that's opentohope.com. Check it out today. Then be sure to stop by next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time when we'll be posting another edition of Open to Hope Radio. Remember, others have been where you are. They made it through, and you can too, as long as you're open to hope.